Hello and welcome to the first tutorial key points video for 201. This first session was about introductions. First of all, an introduction to your fellow students. And I can't stress enough how important it is to get to know your uh, colleagues, to share ideas, to bounce ideas off each other, if sometimes just to have a little complaint, say, oh that tutor is such a rotten so-and-so, at least that sharing um, will will help uh, all of you. So um, I'm sending a form for you to fill out if you weren't uh, at the tutorial uh, that'll allow you to put down what, if any, contact details you want shared uh, with your colleagues. And I would urge you, as I say, I think it's very valuable uh, to keep in touch with uh, each other. We also looked at the course itself um, and I gave an overview, I gave a context of the individual and the state. Uh, the emphasis is on the state itself but of course the state is made up of individuals and um, constitutional and administrative law deals with the actions of those within state bodies, although we'll see that that that's can be defined very widely. Criminal law is the relationship between the individuals um, and state enforcement of uh, particular rules. The context is um, about controlling human nature. Lord Acton said, and I'm going to re be repeating this so many times you'll be sick to death of it, but I think it's the most important thing that uh, lawyers need to remember is that power tends to corrupt, absolute power corrupts absolutely. And we're looking at bad behaviour. In the latter part of the course we'll be looking at bad behaviour in the form of uh, criminal um, restraints, but constitutional law, human rights law, uh, administrative law is all about dissuading and uh, giving remedies for bad behaviour uh, in the use of state power. The structure is um, it's about, as the title suggests, the individual and the state. And you need to ask yourself the question, what can a state do that individuals can't? and uh, we'll be looking at how those special powers uh, are controlled. Constitutional law will um, is covered by units 1 to 5, so you'll be looking at that in February and early March. We then move on to freedoms and human rights, uh, units 7 to uh, 10 in March and April. Judicial review in uh, April to early May. And then criminal law, uh, two aspects to it, the principles and then specific uh, offences will take us from mid-May to early August. You've then got some time in August and the first couple of weeks, or the first few days of September before you take the exam. On TMAs, the cut-off dates and times are absolute. I have only a very limited discretion on granting uh, extensions. And I will urge you as strongly as is possible not to use extensions. My experience over the decade and a half that I've uh, taught on this course is that actually granting extensions doesn't often solve the problem. It merely pushes it back and causes greater problems when it counts more towards the, uh, the end of the course. So the principle will be, if it is foreseeable, like holidays, like a busy period at work, then you need to plan to take account of it. You need to make preparations for those sort of contingencies. Now, illness does strike, uh, there can be bereavement, um, and serious issues like that, you'll find you'll have no problem from me asking for extension. But I will urge you, if it is at all possible not to get behind in your work through uh, uh, the uh, temporary um, help of um, an extension. Word limits, they are an absolute, you can't exceed them. If you look at the rules, I can't mark beyond uh, uh, the word limit. 
state the number of words used in the TMA and it needs to be accurate. Um, I get very suspicious of people who, if it's 1500 words, say it's 1500, but when I do, and it's dead easy now on a computer to do a word count and find that it's 1700, then uh, I'm not well, not well impressed. Uh, style. No bullet points, please. Law essays, I know it's old and boring and traditional, but <laughs> hey, that's law. Um, grading, I would recommend looking in detail at the ETMA guide, pages 7 to 13. It sets out the different marking bands and it sets out uh, those things that uh, need to be there in order for me to justify the mark I give you. I mean, I'm acting like an auditor. My uh, job in marking your essays is to go gather the evidence for a conclusion and the sorts of phrases you'll see in those pages are the things that uh, I uh, look at to come to the conclusion. So worth studying. We looked at resources. Uh, ones provided by the Open University and you have a lot of those. Uh, the things that you can have from me, I will be producing more tutorial key point videos. Uh, you've already had some handouts, there are lots more to come. As I say, I'm not expecting you to read them all, they're just another resource. Uh, there's the Washminster blog. Um, and I will also provide you other information about relevant uh, current affairs, either by email, through a Washminster blog, um, and uh, other sources. On the internet, you've already had a useful websites handout for W201. Um, there's the Washminster again. Um, beware of Wikipedia. Um, some of the stuff there is absolutely excellent, it's well sourced, uh, you can see uh, that the people who've written it have backed it up with the, uh, the evidence. Other stuff can be absolutely uh, rubbish, have no basis in fact whatsoever, but it gets on there. On uh, sites offering assistance with essays, treat them with with real real uh, concern there are no kinds of qualifications that you need to set up a website some 12 year old uh, uh, can get the ladybird book of law and uh, put themselves uh, as if they're an expert to a law i really i you know i have seen some of the uh, stuff that's up there uh, i just don't use them um we did an exercise uh, which uh, invited people to think about uh, writing a constitution. I, I came up with the uh, uh, Independent Republic of Milton Keynes, uh, suggested that we'd thrown off the uh, chains of uh, United Kingdom uh, government and we were setting up our own government uh, in this area. What would you put in the Constitution? What issues do you need to address? Uh, how are you going to allocate powers and how are you going to control the use of those powers? That's worth thinking about. Um, and we finished off, as I will, with uh, many of these uh, uh, key point videos, uh, the next TMA. And it's due on the 12th of March. Uh, it's due at noon. Um, and so that's the uh, the deadline. Uh, it's a single question. Um, it's you've got a statement, but it asks you some for some specific things. I'm looking for uh, your thoughts on defining what a constitution is, what the words written and unwritten mean. Um, I'll be looking for your explanation with examples but most of all, evaluation of the roles of the different sources of our constitutional rules, which go from legislation, through case law, through constitutional conventions, the royal prerogative, the law and custom of Parliament, uh, and some authoritative works. You're going to hear the name Dicey a lot uh, in the first part of this course. But the bulk of the marks are not going to be in description. They'll certainly get more marks for your uh, explanation, but the evaluation of Boyle and Kemp's statement is important. 
he claims that we have a flexible constitution. I want you to evaluate that comment. Is it true? Is it true theoretically? And if so, why? Or why not? And is it true in practice? Again, with your justifications. So evaluation is the uh, thing that will get you the most marks. Explanation, very important. But please, I just, uh, for this level of, of study, mere description is only going to get you the lowest marks. Anyway, look forward to, uh, to either the next video or meeting you at our next tutorial.